What's up everyone and welcome to another cryptocurrency market update. In these videos you will learn how to use technical analysis to forecast price movements in your favorite cryptocurrencies and also see where we are looking to buy and sell these crypto assets ourselves. So let's get into it here with Bitcoin and then we'll go into Ethereum thereafter. So if we're looking at Bitcoin on the monthly time frame you can see that this monthly candlestick will close in 7 days and 12 hours. We've already set our monthly high here on this run up. Now we're looking to set a higher low in comparison to this uh, low down here from September, which I have marked. It is at about $9,800. It's very likely we will set a higher low above that just because the uh, percentage that we've risen since then is pretty significant. And so for us to come down and blow right through this without at least bouncing once before that is unlikely at this point. So if we look at the uh, monthly pivots here, you can see the R3 pivot was what we uh, bounced off of here initially and rejected down to. You can see right now the R1 pivot is currently kind of supporting price at this point. Um, if we close the monthly candle below the R1, we could potentially see a move down to the pivot level down here, which is at about $20,800. Uh, if we look at the weekly time frame. The weekly time frame is showing us uh, the potential for a rounded top scenario right here. Um, we'll see what we end up getting in the next, I would say, few months, considering this is the weekly time frame. It's going to take a while for this to play out. But you can see right now the light blue support zone that we've been talking about since back here in February is holding up uh, for the time being. We did not go below that level here. We got close, but we did not quite get down to the bottom as you can see there um, and right now we're currently operating above that I would imagine that this level probably will hold for this first test just because this is the main zone that uh, if we go below you know the next zone where we're gonna be looking to form that monthly higher low is gonna be down here on this weekly candle from December 7th which is down at about nineteen thousand five hundred dollars so you know, we could end up seeing a monthly bounce here. Um, if we come up now, the areas to watch are going to be where the bodies of the candles are, where the price kind of got supported here. So you can see right here, we had a little bounce and then we, we've we dropped down since that point. So this area right here is going to be a key level to watch when we first test it. This is right around uh, 49,000. So that's going to be where I'm keeping my eyes open. Um, as we look to potentially see a bounce here. I mean, we already are seeing a bounce, so let's look at the three-day time frame and see what we're dealing with. You can see on the three-day time frame, we're getting these long lower wicks here, and this closes in 11 hours. So if this closes with these long lower wicks, which this candle already will have a long lower wick no matter what, this candle right here is the candlestick that we're we're concerned with, you know, where where we're going to close. It is going to end up being an inside bar most likely uh, inside of this candlestick here. So where we are looking for this to potentially go if we do bounce is up to the first resistance level here, which is this uh, candle back here from when we established a three day bull trend. So once you establish a three day bull trend like this with a high low, I'm sorry, a low, high, higher low, and then higher high pattern with two candle closes above the key high. You can see that if we draw a rectangle on this black candle, the last area where people were selling their Bitcoin, they bought their Bitcoin back here and then subsequently rose to a new all-time high. Came back into it here, tested it a second time, bounced off of it a second time, and then once we tested it the third time here, you can see we pushed right through it and we've closed uh, three candlesticks below this now. So this level will be resistance on a retest. This is what we call a support resistance flip zone because they're, it's flipping from being support here to now being resistance here most likely. So this is a potential trade setup that I'm looking for. Um, if we do end up coming up to this point over the next several like kind of days because this is on the three day time frame, this would be, if we went into the body of the candle, that would be about a 66% uh, increase from the ultimate low that we set at 29000 And so this would be a pretty good spot, in my opinion, for us to set a lower high 
before coming down. And if we are going to change this three-day trend back to the bull's favor to come down, form a higher low, and then come up and form a higher high if we're going to keep going up. So it's got a good risk reward as well. Um, you can see I have the short position tool pulled up here. And if you're not familiar with how to use the short position tool, you can check out the video uh, that we made showing you how to use this as well as the long position tool, which you can find here on the side menu in trading view. It helps calculate your um, risk reward ratio as well as your percentage that your stop loss is away from entry and your profit potential, depending on where you're uh, where your target is so it's pretty quick and handy and it helps save you some time so check that video out if you don't know how to use that tool already um, it also helps you calculate your position size so with that position size calculation that we've talked about before in videos where you're taking your total portfolio account size multiplied by the percentage of your portfolio that you want to risk on that given trade let's say it's one percent and then divide that that number that you got from multiplying those two numbers by the percentage that your stop loss is away from entry, which in my, in my case right here is going to be 10.53% roughly. So then that will give you your position size, which is the amount of uh, Bitcoin, in this case, that you could either buy or sell on a given position. So that's called your position size, and that's the calculation for that. Um, if we go to the lower term time frames here, um, let's go to the daily so if we look at the daily, you can see we haven't set a, we haven't came up and formed a lower high since May 14th. And I said yesterday in the video that it's likely that we will need to do that before we continue to go down because you're seeing these longer lower wicks of people buying the dip. And you can see today that we have gotten, uh, we have finally done that. We've came up and we've, uh, went above the previous daily high here so we have at least even if we go down from here we've formed a lower high in comparison to this one so we'll see what we end up getting on the daily time frame if we go to the lower term time frames like the four hour for instance um, there's a couple levels that i'm watching here so the first level is the level that i talked about yesterday and this level did end up holding for a oh, for a trade um, but it was a, it wasn't like an extremely profitable trade. Um, if you you know were to enter on the bottom of the the uh, wick of the candle right here, and take you down, you know it was about a two percent trade. So it wasn't a terrible trade, but um, you know that's that's about the extent of what we got there. Um, now we've gotten one candle close above that zone, and so if we close in the next three hours above this this zone as well, this one up being a support zone. For price um, and we will look to potentially see a bounce off of that level you can see the pivot the hourly pivot level here is here as well so this is going to be an area that I will look to go long on um, likely if we end up getting the this candle close above this gray zone so the way that this would kind of look is um, something like this we have our stop loss below the gray zone and then we have um, an entry maybe on the wick of the top of the candle and then maybe one on the body of the candle which is closer to that pivot zone there. Um, and then where would the target for this one be? I mean, the target for this one likely is gonna be some sort of a mean reversion, um, which if we pull up our Ichimoku Cloud indicator here, you can see that we're already kind of close to the the mean, which is this, um, this uh, key June level right here so right now this is about a 1.71 risk to reward ratio it's not terrible um, but it's also not very good as well um, but I I do think that we will end up seeing um, a bounce from this level if we do get a candle close above it just because um, the way that this candle the way that this support and level support level works you know it's it's pretty it's a valid level obviously you see right here um, so if we come back into it, you know, the confluence with the, uh, the hourly pivot here as well, it's pretty good reason for me to try and, uh, get a long entry in there and then target somewhere inside of this yellow resistance level above when we had our, um, we had our, uh, um, bear trend, sorry. 
If we go to the 12 hour time frame, we can see the other major resistance level before that gray zone that I talked about, which is this white candle right here. So this white candle starts at about 43,196 and goes up to about 45,851. Uh, this is where we were just continuing that bear trend. This is going to be the major. So you, you could even, you know, take your if if this level uh, holds, you could even take your um, your um, target up to the bottom of that level. If you think we're going to go above like this key high here, um, it you know, if we start to go if we go above this yellow zone, we will probably see some sort of a short squeeze from people that are going short down here um you know the, a lot of people are getting bearish down here and so you can see the long lower wicks of people buying the dip that that knew that you know we're, we're getting a little bit too bearish for the short term we might be you know we're in a higher time frame bear trend but we need to keep in mind that you know you can't just go up or down rapidly um without having at least a couple bounces or drops in the meantime because you need some sort of mean reversion if you drop too quickly. So that's what we're seeing on Bitcoin. Let's dive over to Ethereum here. Ethereum monthly candle. This is a doozy. <laughs> a lot of opportunity on this candle, but also a lot of uh, a lot of pain as well, I'm sure. So you can see that right now we have uh, the makings of a um, Darth Maul candle, which is a candlestick that looks like the Darth Maul lightsaber from Star Wars, which is a long upper and lower wick. Um, we're, we're seeing right now that we had this crazy wick up to about $4,400. We're now at about $2,439 and we dipped below the monthly low here of $1,886 from the previous month. And subsequently right now we're kind of just, um, bouncing off of that level. If we look at the weekly time frame, this is the level that we've been talking about for quite some time. Um, back here, you can see that price has reacted to this level very nicely. So if you've been keeping up with this channel um, and potentially, uh, you know, we're looking at this level, this is a 33% uh, trade already over the course of about a day. So uh, pretty good so far in terms of uh, the profit potential for this trade. Um, a lot of fear on this candle right here. And so buying this with your stop loss below was a pretty good risk to reward ratio type of trade because we were pretty blown out in terms of the speed of this drop. You can look at like the daily time frame and you can see that we we had a high here on May 14th and then just down candles every day until uh, May, you know, for nine days. So nine days of continued downside until we got, you know, down to about a 34.88 uh, RSI and now you can see right now we're coming up for the first time since May 14th So we'll see what we end up getting um, in terms of this bounce how high we're gonna go here um, Where I'm looking if we go to the 12 hour, I'm sorry, it's the 8 hour If we go to the 8 hour time frame, this is the main level that I'm keeping an eye on this is a resistance level for price that we had from this bear trend right here where we had our high low lower high and then lower low right here with two candle closes below this key low right here so this is the main level this should be acting as resistance but if we go right through this and we close two candles above it this will end up being a strong support level for price that i will look to go long on uh, targeting somewhere above up here um, probably Probably at least this high right here, which is up at about $3,000. But you can see we're seeing decreasing bull volume here, which is uh, not what we want to see if we're uh, obviously a bull looking for us to push through this zone. The bulls are going, I mean, this is really going to be carried with what Bitcoin does. So if Bitcoin uh, on the four hour time frame closes above this gray zone, comes into it and then bounces off of it then this will end up being um, this will end up being a very good uh, setup in terms of ethereum potentially going through this zone as well in the coming uh, hours um, if we look at where are the other resistance levels for price 
besides that gray zone up here, which is, sorry, I didn't even mention that. On the daily time frame, this is our first resistance zone over here, which is um, from this bull trend here. You can see that this level held a support right here perfectly. And then once we push through this level, this is going to be flipping into resistance now. So if we come back into this level, which is up at about 3350, this is the area where um, people are going to be looking to sell their Ethereum that they bought back up here. Um, now that they see that we had this uh, massive drawdown in price. So that's kind of what we're seeing with Ethereum. If we look at the four hour, let's see if there's anything else here. Four hour, no, it's looking pretty messy, so not too much there. But one thing I wanted to point out on Bitcoin and Ethereum is the potential for an inverse head and shoulders pattern here where we're seeing um, the left shoulder, the head, and then potentially a right shoulder right here up into um, somewhere up here. If we look at what the target of that would be, if that pattern ends up playing out, it would be something like this where we ha we go up to the neckline which let's just call the bodies of these candles that's about seven thousand one hundred dollars so if we take our measurement tool and we go from the bodies of those candles up about seven thousand one hundred dollars that takes us to about forty five thousand three hundred so um, in terms of that four hour trade you know, now if that ends up being the case, now our, our risk to reward ends up becoming a lot better because now we're going up to 45.3 uh, roughly, which is right up here. And now our risk to reward is about 4.77. So it's a lot better than it was. Um, and so now we got pretty good profit potential. So we'll see what we end up getting here uh, in terms of Bitcoin price action and Ethereum. But that's all I got for this one, guys. If you like this video, give it a like down below and subscribe for future educational content around cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. And if you have not already, check out our beginner technical analysis course that we just released on Lutheria.com. You can learn all the different fundamental elements that you need to get started generating consistent profit for yourself trading cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And we're currently running a 20% off special through the end of the month. So go check that out. And enroll in that course. And until tomorrow, onward and upward.